we need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live. This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store for Forest Irish Out. Freebets.com. Delighted today to be joined with Kevin Arena. It's uh, well deep into training camp now. Um, March the 8th, a big, big bill for yourself. Um, but I suppose yeah. he just firstly touched in. Um, how's things? How, how are things, mate? How's things been? Oh, good. Thanks, brother. All good this side, you know. South Africa is nice, warm and sunny at the moment. So, uh, great climate to training for training camp. So, things are going really good. But otherwise, I can't complain. Blessed to have this opportunity and, uh, yeah, ready to, to go out there on the 8th of March and, 8th of March and do my thing. Well, firstly, I'll supposed to touch on that. Obviously, you are from South Africa, trained in South Africa. Um, what would you say sort of the, the, the boxing is like out there, the training is like out there? Because um, I'm sure you've boxed in all, all different areas. Obviously, um, you know, London, this one, the next one being in Saudi Arabia. But how is yeah. sort of the training different to when you compare it to potentially America or the UK and other areas like that? Um, we got, I think, I feel like we're a very overlooked country in terms of talent, potential and the depth. South Africa's got really good boxing trainers and uh, good facilities for like strength and conditioning, boxing, recovery, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, as much as we're a third world country, we've got good sporting facilities and, and obviously our other sports show those results too. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, would you say now that with guys like yourself, um, I suppose Drika Stupasi in the UFC as well, who's now a champion, um, the, the people are more starting to know about what, what can come out of South Africa and the talent that you've got, especially in the combat sports world. Yes, definitely. I think, obviously, Drick has had a massive win at UFC in beating uh, Sean Strickland. And then you got um, another young South African kid, a uh, 24-year-old, if I'm not mistaken, flyweight guy, really yeah. uh, lightweight division, Sivanati Nonchinga. He just won oh, yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, of course, yeah. He just won in Mexico. So, you no, know, South African boxing is... It's, it's never been on the down. It's always been on the up. But I do somewhat feel that we've been overlooked. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Well, I suppose we will touch on uh, yourself, March the 8th, uh, Saudi Arabia, a massive bill. Um, we've seen uh, Fury and Garnu, AJ versus uh, Wallin and, and fights there. Um, I suppose now for yourself to be a part of it, you must be buzzing it and, and relishing the fact of fighting on a big stage and a big card like that. Of course, you know, um, Saudi Arabia, I've said it in many other interviews before, they've changed the landscape of sport, not alone boxing, you know. Obviously, with boxing, the landscape of boxing is there right now in terms of revenue, monetary offers, and the big fights are all happening in Saudi Arabia. They're making things happen. Um, His Excellency, Turkey, Spencer, and all the promoters working together, you know, Matrim, uh, Queensbury, and, and, and to name a few other promoters coming together to make the biggest fights happen. So I think it's... Uh, it's great for sport, and I'm just really humbled to be getting out there again. You know, obviously, I had my last big heavyweight outing um, on the 3rd of December, Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. co man event to Tyson and Derek Chisora. Um, and then I had two Bridgeweight fights. I won the interim Bridgeweight yeah. World title. I beat Riyad Murray, and then I beat Sinead Gashi. So, you no, know, this has put me in good stead to have another good crack at heavyweight. Now we're going to go dabble at the heavyweights again in a big international contest. And, uh, I think there'll be big things and big promise for the winner. So there's a lot on the line, actually, even though it's a non-title bout. I was going to say that. Is it good that you're back in the mix now and back in big fights? Because you had the Dubois fight and uh, that obviously had, that was marred in controversy. You know, we'll get onto that in a minute, but you sort of got over that defeat, um, beat Murray, beat Gashi, and that was must be a good feeling that you're getting rewarded in a sense from sort of getting back on the road and, and getting big wins like they both were. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, obviously, Gashi had a good record, but in terms of a fighter, Murray he was a much more accomplished fighter than Gashi, a former world champion. I think he had a record of, I think he was 27 and 1 when I fought Murray he with 26 wins. I think 20 wins by KO. He's a good fighter. He just beat Tony Yoka. Yeah, he's a bona fight yeah. heavyweight, you know. So it was a good victory. And I, and I took that fight immediately after Dubois. So it wasn't like I took an easy fight back, you know. So we got straight back into the mix of things and I think that put me in uh, in good stead to have these big heavyweight fights but yeah I'm grateful to be back out there again to 
to go back onto your question, just good to be out there. Saudi Arabia, massive card. Joshua and Ganu, you know, two big, two big men colliding. It's dab knockout chaos for a reason. I think it's going to be an exciting fight, and and I'm pretty sure the undercard is going to be just as good. And one thing we were saying there, talking about Saudi Arabia, um, as a fan, it's great to see that the politics is almost stripped down in a sense, and anyone and and the big fights are getting made. But I'm sure as a fighter. Seeing these, you taking the opportunity as well, and seeing these great opportunities, it must be great that you know you're staying ready because you never know who you could be in the mix with next as well. After yeah. you know, if you get come through March the eighth as well, for sure. And then I'm sure you saw, you saw. There's been a lot of curveballs thrown with the Saudi landscape. You know, some results, not the results yeah. people expected. You know, people getting opportunities post good performances. So there's a lot on the line. I think pretty much Saudi Arabia right now. You could kind of call it the Grand Prix of boxing, and I think it's going to be the Grand Prix of boxing, hopefully for a for a long while. Definitely, uh, absolutely. And I suppose uh, we'll we'll touch on on the Daniel Dubois fight. Um, that's I suppose when a lot of people in the UK crowd got to know yourself. Um, and we talked about the the controversy that was marred in um, first round. You had him down uh, three times, uh, mm. and then I think it was the fight. Obviously, came to the end of the third round, but that was marred in controversy with it. I believe that was around the was finished early and obviously right at the end, it stops it right at the end um, or end of the third round. Um, when you look back on it now, I suppose it's been it's been a long time now. Is it still sort of some, do you look at it towards with some bitterness or are you a little bit over it now? Um, nah, what would you no say? bitterness, man. And no bitterness, to be fair. Uh, I don't live my life in the past, you know. I only look forward. Um, in the moment, yeah, I was a hard dumber, possibly. You know, it depends which way you look at it. But it is what it is, you know. This is sport, you know. Sometimes the ball won't always bounce your way, won't always fall in your court. But it's a, a true champion is somebody who comes through the adversity and keeps moving forward. So yeah. it is what it is. I mean, we saw Daniel Dubois. He got a, a victory over me. You know, he, he, I felt like he did come up a bit unlucky against Usyk, even though he stopped, you know. He had a little bit of controversy in, here, in his fight with Usyk, whether it was a Lobo or yeah. not. And then he came out and had a good performance against Jarrell Miller. So that's heavyweight boxing. You know, you got to move with the punches and go with yeah. the flow. It's not always going to bounce in your court, you know. And it's just yeah. the way I looked at it. You know, I, if I keep going back, I mean, I've, I've been asked this question a lot this week. You know, yeah, it was a hard time. Yeah. Well, it depends which way you look at it. You know, it is what it is. I mean, do I think the first round ended 10 seconds early? Yes, it did. If you use the okay. timer, it did. I dropped him three times. Yes, I did. Um, when I got dropped at the end of the third, was I hurt to a degree? Yes, I was. Did the ref call it off soon? Maybe he did, but maybe he saw something that no one else saw, you know? So it is what it is. It's heavyweight boxing, and, and I don't hop on the past. You can't take the victory away from Daniel Dubois because I had the opportunity to finish him in the first, and uh, he managed to to get through the first round by... By being, um, I think, smart after I caught him on top yeah. of the temple, he took two or three knees to try to gain his equilibrium. Yeah. So, you know, credit to him. He got the victory over me that night. And and if I pass through cross again one day for, for bigger glory and higher honors, then so be it. But no, no, no bitterness and sourness towards that fight at all. I learned a lot. And I think that fight uh, took my share price up quite a bit too. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to say it for yourself where you look back on someone like Dubai, who's obviously has done well since that fight, and, and yourself has done well since that fight, um, and potential losses like that in your career where it doesn't always go your way. Um, and when you were so close to victory, do you feel like those are the best lessons that you can can get from from your career? And when it all when it the best lessons are sometimes when it isn't always gone your way. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot. You know that that um, I tell a lot of people that was the first time. Uh, I found myself on the canvas in an 11-year professional career, you know. In 11 years of fighting, it's the first time I've had to face uh, adversity. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot, you know. I learned a hell of a lot on that night. And I believe I've evolved as a fighter over those past, call it now, a year and a bit. It's been a year and, what, three months? I've evolved a hell of a lot since then, and I've grown a lot. So I've grown in, I've grown in, in heart, grown in wisdom, and I've learned, you know, what it's about and what the true, true being up against of the ropes saying is about. So I've learned and I've grown and I believe you've seen the best version of Kevin Lorena right now. What you saw that evening wasn't the best version of me. You know, at that point, I thought it was the best version of me. 
But if I look at how I'm performing now and what I'm doing in the gym now in terms of numbers, my skill set in sparring, my strength and conditioning, you're seeing a much better, more seasoned Kevin Arena now at 31 years old. You saying that there about that being the first time in your 11-year professional career, um, I suppose, being on the canvas and facing that adversity, you trained hard and you, you, know, you put a lot, a lot of work in. Mentally, do you think that there's anything that can prepare you for that sort of adversity when it comes to a fight, pressure and everything like that? Look, when you get caught and you find yourself on your back, there's nothing really that can prepare you for that. But your hard work and training will always be in the back of your mind to say, get up and continue. And that's what I try to do. I got straight back up, got back in the fight, was throwing flurries of my own on the ropes, got caught by uppercuts and then got stopped. But I had the heart and the desire in me to continue. You know, I got that no quit attitude. And I didn't, I, I didn't say when I got knocked down, well, I'm going to stay down because that was a hell of a hard punch and I'm buzzing. I got straight back up. I'm a fighting man. You know, I've, I, I come from a, a fighting background and, and uh, a family that's worked hard to be where we want to be. So I think what can prepare you for something like that is life lessons. And that's a life lesson on its own. But the hard work and the hard training is always there to keep you going. But yeah. that, that natural instinct, that's, that's something you can't really teach. Yeah. Absolutely. I suppose speaking of, of, of training and hard work, um, you, you have been in camp with Tyson Fury, uh, was preparing, I suppose, for, for yesterday's date uh, of the Alexander Rusik fight. Um, in camp with him, and I suppose it is Fury as well that, that is, uh, is obviously a big name, but there's also there was obviously always numerous sparring partners there. What was that camp in the lead up uh, to, to the, the, the supposed date of 17th of February like? And uh, how much wealth of knowledge would you say and, uh, and learning did that do for yourself? Yeah, it was great. It was great to be in camp with Tyson. You know, he's the world champion, terrific boxer, great ring IQ, um, good people. You know, they really treated me well. Like I told a few other networks, I was, I was looked after there in camp. And there was a, a good group of guys around us at the time when I was there. Um, there was Alexi, I think it's Barreri from Canada, yeah. Moses Itauma, um, and myself as his three sparring partners. So it was a good group of us. So we trained hard together. We did the conditioning together. We did the, when we sparred, we sparred with each other. We sparred with Tyson. So it was really good. And I understand this is probably a, a, a question that you have got a lot in the various interviews that you've done. Um, but throughout um, the training camp, and especially sort of towards the end of uh, the postponement, um, especially a lot of, a lot of uh, media personalities and people in the UK were coming out and sort of coming out with certain rumours about the training camp. Uh, and things that had happened in, I suppose, from yourself that, that was in the training camp, any of that sort of, I'm, I'm sure that you would say that all of that was mostly nonsense, I'd imagine. No, it was. Oh, from, for what, what rumours are you talking about? So, obviously, there was the one of, everyone was saying about the whole thing about Opatai dropping in, but um, Johnny uh, Johnny Nelson came and said that Tyson was getting manhandled in sparring um, on talk sport and things like that. So, um, those were sort of the rumours that I was mostly alluded to. Nah, <laughs> I guess rumors will always be rumors, and, and rumor mongers will always spread rumors. Um, no, I can I can tell you what happens in in beyond closed doors in the gym. You know, I never talk out of yeah, it's, of it's etiquette, it's professionalism. But neither Tyson nor Jaapata were dropped in sparring. You know what I mean? Tyson yeah. most definitely wasn't dropped. It's probably the best I've seen Tyson was on that day. Um, with regards to other sparring partners um, uh, getting the better of him. No, not necessarily, to be honest. I think Tyson works on a game plan and what he wants to work on that day is what he's going to focus on. You must remember, when you're in training camps, you go like this. Yes. So one day you can look out of this world and the next day you can look a little bit flat, but that's understandable. The man's yes. training very hard. So people can't really say he was getting manhandled. You know, He was doing what he needed to do and getting his working and doing well. So, yeah, I think it's just rumors, man. People... Yeah. We always spread rumors. You know, when you when you when you uh, on the top of the mountain, you're yeah. always going to attract the most wind. You know, so I think yeah. that's what Tyson where Tyson is right now. With any sports, we look at AJ when AJ mm -hmm. was uh, world, well, world champion and on top of his game and former world champion. He was getting a lot of slack and a lot of wind. And now mm -hmm. Tyson's the WBC world champion and and he's getting it. So I think that's just the nature of the beast and the nature of the sport. You know, I think people are always going to talk whether it's good or bad, but I think the most important thing is that they're talking. So when they stop yeah. talking about you, you need to be worried. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose one person I did want to ask you about there, um, you mentioned Moses Atalma, uh, making big, big waves over in the UK. 
many, many people tipping him to be the next big thing coming up the heavyweight. Seeing him, uh, training with him and seeing the potential that he's got. How exciting of a talent do you believe that Moses can be uh, down the line? No, Moses is a, is a big talent. You know, I, I like him as a person too. We spent a bit of time together. He's a very, very slick, slick, naturally talented and naturally gifted fighter and boxer. So he's got all all the tools, you know, now it's up to to him whether to take it how far he wants to go. But he's got all the tools, most definitely, to do it. For sure. And one thing I, I was going to ask you about, um, I suppose if anyone looks on your Instagram, they would have seen uh, you was on a, a, a FaceTime call the other day with a, a certain Floyd Mayweather, um, mm. having conversations with him, with his experience, his wealth of knowledge, um, I suppose not even in a boxing sense, but in a life sense, how beneficial do you feel like that has been for you? So important, man. You know, Floyd's a, one of the greatest of our era. He's achieved what many fighters haven't in terms of revenue, monetary, championship status. So he knows the sport of boxing. And, and he's obviously, his boxing wealth of knowledge is it's unlimited, you know. So I always bump ideas of him. Floyd obviously been a big supporter of mine for the past two years. And since my Dubois loss, you know, he, he rang me up and he spoke to me and he was saying, you know, like I was unlucky and, and, and you'll be back. You keep doing what you're doing. So he gave me some encouragement. One of the few people who did give me encouragement after my loss, you know. And um, when I got the victory over Yoko, over, over, over Murray, okay. he was very, very impressed. And uh, he always mentioned to me about my defense. And, you know, I'm a very offensive attacking fighter. But, you know, just don't forget the defense. Don't forget the being smart, you know. So we implement those into our camps now. My head trainer, Peter Smith. He's a phenomenal uh, coach. He, he's got a very aggressive fighting style and a head movement style, which is something very different to what Floyd Mayweather does. Yeah. But Floyd will always just, you know, just keep me, like, remind me, you know, don't get hit in there. It was the same thing my head coach is telling me. You don't want to get hit in there. You know, nobody, it's not a, it's not a tough man sport. It's a smart man sport, you know. The yeah. tough man doesn't last that long. I mean, and that's pretty obvious. So I, I, I learn a lot from Floyd and, just it's nice is having his backing and I'm not talking about money backing. I'm not talking yeah. about, it's just support. He gives me support. And to me, that's all I need. Yeah, for sure. And I just suppose the last one from me, uh, getting through March the 8th, how big do you feel like 2024 and what else can, can come after that can be for yourself? Look, I mean, we cannot overlook Justice Hooney. You know, um, that's the fight that's been proposed to us. And obviously, I'm I'm pretty keen on that fight, and he is too. I saw his team announced it, so I guess it's pretty much out there. So, Justin Hoon is a tough competitor. I think he had a good amateur background. You know, he's eight and zero as a pro, relatively inexperienced as a professional, but he's got good amateur experience. Big, strong guy, explosive. So it's going to make for a good fight. You know, I'm by no means not strong. I'm by no means not explosive myself. So. It's going to make for a good fight. And this is the thing with Saudi Arabia. The best of fights and the best in order to go higher and higher and onto bigger and greater things and bigger paydays and, and earning what fighters deserve to earn in today's era. So it's going to be a competitive fight. And I cannot overlook March 8th. You say, what's next? Well, yeah. there's obviously carrots dangling for both of us. You know, he team might be saying, well, this is next. That is next. My team and, and certain people are saying, this is, could happen. That could happen. But at the end of the day, my only focus is on Justice Hooney. He's a tough competitor and a big mountain standing in front of me, which I need to climb. And uh, that's that's my focus for now. And obviously, putting out a good show on the 8th of March. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin, just want to say thank you for taking such time to speak to me. Good to be catching up with you again, all the way from South Africa. And I suppose all the best for March the 8th, mate, uh, against Justice Hooney, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, mate. Thank you. All right, brother. Anytime, and thank you for having me on your channel. Always. Thank you. No problem, mate. Top man. Thank you.